And we are delighted to welcome Adelina Tomasera, who is going to be talking about modelling the future costs of long-term care. They usually costs are referred to as elephants, but I'm sure Adelina will work in a different currency other than elephants. So thank you for coming and replacing Raphael. No problem. Uh, Raphael is in court. I think I'm feeling that you're from Mackinac. <laughs> <laughs> He's in jury service. Uh, the case was expected to be shorter, but we found out yesterday it means that Going on, and uh, we think, in, as good as he's at being in many places at almost the same time, he just couldn't quite do. <laughs> so I'll be giving his presentation. I'll try and impersonate him as well as I can. I've worked with him for many years. That's a long time, I think. Um, <laughs> that's I'm one of the colleagues there. Um, so his presentation is more about the work we've done so far. And we'll, and we'll leave Martin to tell you what the work will be doing as part of modern. And it's a bit to set in context the kind of um, modeling we're building on. Um, so the work we've done, it's actually started quite a long time ago, has been funded by many people over time, the kind of how we pay research funds and so on. And we've worked with many very good colleagues, some of whom are here, including Luis Fernandez, Bobo, Derek King, Julia Mali, and Linda Picard. And colleagues. And uh, we have also benefited enormously from collaborating with lots of colleagues, but especially we've had very long term collaborations with Ruth Hancock at the University of East Anglia and Carol Jagapus here from um, Newcastle University. <laughs> Not mentioned that with uh, yeah. uh, The policy context has been very much, uh, on which our work has been set until now, has very much been set about financing and concerns about affordability. What we're doing in modem is quite different, actually. Although we still want to know how much kids cost, it's not so much the focus. And it's been a lot to do with the fact that care is highly labor intensive. We have, as a population, potentially rising expectations about the, how good care should be like. And that's probably one of the questions that we ask outside is how do we think care should be like in 2040? We know, and that's been discussed already, that we'll have increasing numbers of people living to late old age, which of course is great news. And there is uncertainty over the numbers who will need care. There's been a huge debate in the UK, you all know, you can't have escaped it, about the fiscal sustainability of long-term care funding and what's the appropriate balance between public and private financing. And for that purpose, we have been commissioned by many people, but it all started um, really with the Royal Commission um, to provide <coughs> projections exploring different financing systems. So that was the building blocks of the kind of modeling we will be using here. Uh, we have done co projections uh, for cognitive impairment for the Alzheimer's Research Trust a while ago, and in there we explored different scenarios about what dementia care will be like in the future, and that raised huge amounts of questions that until hopefully now we haven't really been able to explore in more detail, and we're delighted that we'll be able to add in this project. So we've been looking, for example, we're looking at this impact of changing prevalence of dementia, different patterns of cares, and and so on. And I won't say more, so I'll to Martin. We've also done projections for younger adult groups for the Department of Health and Children Commission. Long term care is really, we start with the key building blocks of and paid care by family and friends, especially spouses and adult children. We've heard about that so powerfully that that's not to be said much more. We have um, social services involved through formal home based services, residential care health services, community nursing therapy services, and of course there is also an element of cash benefits for disability benefits, which comes by social security, which is an important element of the overall care resources. What we have developed over the years is what we call the PSSRE or macro model, and that is called aggregate, the good systems more. And that's basically an enormous spreadsheet that's connected with lots of other little models here and there. And it produces the numbers of uh, disabled for the people in different points in time, the numbers of those, the numbers of all the users of informal care, formal care services and disability benefits, and then we calculate public and private expenditure of long-term care, sometimes under different financing regimes, and we can also calculate the workforce that will be needed to provide <coughs> that care in the future. Uh, the drivers of demand for care, the kind of things we have to plug into the model to get our results, are of course life expectancy, how long people live, mortality rates, uh, disability rates. And the key question there is, what's happening with 
at um, compression or expansion of mobility, as it has present and people love to ask. All the politicians we have been giving uh, projections of expenditure to say, but we're having compression of mobility, haven't we? And that's basically what that means is, uh, is it not going to be the case that we will live longer, but of those longer years, more of those, or a higher proportion of those, will be spent in good health? And we have, luckily, we have Carol here helping us and holding our hands to all these kind of questions, telling us, well, you know, it's not so easy to just assume that this is what will happen in the future. And there are quite a few things that would be needed to place in the way we care for all the people, perhaps for that to even be a, a possibility or a not quite said. And if there's any question on that, I'll pass it on. Um, another factor is uh, that will affect uh, demand for care is household composition and informal care. And here, one of our colleagues in the PR has taken this side of work and extended it uh, and produced some really good work on it. That's been supported quite recently by IDPR. And another very important factor is the unit cost of care, such as how much is an hour of care. And how does that change over time? And will care be more or less expensive compared to other items in the future? And, it is not. and all these are sources of uncertainty about future care costs. And of course, public expectations about long term care. Are we going to accept as a society care that we know to be below uh, quality, or are we going to be expecting much more than that in the coming future? So we can come up with this model, and there are lots of assumptions built in it. I'll just quickly go through it. Basically, it's quite a conservative model, in the sense that the base assumes that things other than the model you pretty much stay as they expect, as they are now. We assume usually, unless Carol tells us otherwise, that <laughs> the prevalence of disability rate and gender will remain unchanged. And unit costs are assumed to rise in line with, the, with wages in the rest of the economy. And that's, we use usually the same assumptions as the treasury, so we cannot have that. And we assume, and that's again a huge assumption, that patterns of care, formal and informal, will remain in change over time. From that, we obtain numbers, and this is the most recent ones we did. That's only for, um, so that's just, we projected, for example, that between 2010 and 2030, the numbers of disabled people rise by 60, nearly 60%. The number of users of services would then rise but just a bit more and less due to the changes in demand and household composition. And from that we then obtain expenditure projections, which I'll just show you as a slide. We basically estimated that 2010 um, we were spending about 12 billion in public, only public expenditure on care, rising to mm -hmm. <laughs> 25.5 by 2030, and as a percentage of GDP, that was just under 1%, 0.95 in 2010, rising to 1.3% by 2030, which we may say is not that much, actually, and we still so worry about it. Um, and I'll end up with that, that's a link to our website, and I'm sure Matthew will explain how we're going to take all this model very quickly.